Hello and welcome to The Nurse Station. I'm Rhea Mobley and today we're going to talk about DKA versus HHS. And I really want y'all to think when you study, anytime you can do a chart, compare and contrast with disorders you should. For instance, when you're taking a case study for the next gen NCLEX and it's giving you your data, right? And you got to figure out what is this most likely showing me? DKA and HHS have so many similarities, but there is big differences we need to note and therefore treat differently. So I encourage you, um, we're gonna review patho real quick, but I have a chart on the other side. So anytime you can compare and contrast disorders that mimic each other or are complete opposites, do so, I'll help you remember better. So diabetes, your blood glucose is too high. We know that we need glucose. This is my cell and this is my vessel. So my bloodstream, right? We know that we need glucose to enter the cell so that we can use it for energy. We need glucose for energy. So right now, that glucose channel is closed. Insulin, right? Insulin helps blood sugar enter cells so it can be used for energy. Insulin will attach to an insulin receptor on the cell and therefore open up the glucose channel and it'll let the glucose enter the cell where we want it, where we need to use it, right? Because we need it for energy. Well, in type one di diabetes, look, there's an immune response that attacks your pancreas because you know that insulin is created in your beta cells. So pretty much this is very important. They have little to no insulin production. Little to no insulin. So if you have little to no insulin, there's no insulin to attach to the insulin receptor on the cell to allow the glucose channel to open, okay? So when you have little to no insulin, glucose is not transported into the cell, and this stands for increased blood glucose. So our glucose is in our blood, so it's increased in our blood glucose. And when blood glucose gets too high, body copes by the three Ps, all right? So let's think about this. It's very important to understand the three Ps. When I have too much sugar out here in my blood, it can't get into my cell because look, I have little to no insulin. So my glucose channel is closed, okay? I have little to no insulin attaching to my insulin receptor on my cell. So all the glucose starts to build up in your blood. Your kidneys cope it will start taking that excess glucose from your blood and it's gonna pee it off, right? So diabetic clients can pee more frequently called polyuria. Now, when you're peeing more frequently, pee more frequently, your body copes, right? So it's, it's a beautiful um, like thing. So you're peeing so much thing, what is beautiful thing? But <laughs> you're peeing so much that your body's like, oh shoot, I need more fluid because I'm peeing off too much fluid, but it's a coping mechanism, right? We're trying to pee off all this excess blood sugar through urine and we have polyuria, but now we're getting thirsty because we're peeing too much. So we have polydipsia, which is increased thirst because our body's trying to cope to get us drink more. And then I am still, my, my mind is still being triggered that I'm starving because the glucose is not in the cell and I need that for energy. So even though you have blood sugar or sugar in your body, it's in the wrong place. So your brain's like, oh shoot, I need to eat more because I don't have the energy where I need it, which is polyphagia, okay? I should have left more room, I'm sorry. Polyphagia, so this is your coping mechanism, right? Now. When the three Ps occur, if you have no external insulin, remember, type one diabetics usually don't know that they have diabetes. So usually they can get very sick and go into DKA because of undiagnosis. They didn't know they had it. So if no external insulin is provided, the cells starve and your liver starts to break down fat for energy. And that is where you get ketone production. And ketones, right, they can make us very sick. They can put us in an acidic state, which we'll talk about in a second. Versus type two, I want you to look at this. The pathway is exactly the same until one point. So you have become desensitized to insulin or have insulin resistance. So you still have insulin, right? You still have insulin in your body 
that can attach to your insulin receptors, but your body might not respond as well. It's desensitized to it. So some glucose is still getting in, but it might not be the amount we want, right? It's, it's not allowing the appropriate amount of glucose to enter the cells. But the key is type two diabetics still have insulin, okay? So less glucose is transported into the cell, your body copes, more insulin is released, and then over time, beta cells get fatigued. Type two is a gradual onset. Type one, acute onset, again, because they have no insulin. So when there, more insulin is released, over time, beta cells get fatigued, you have increased blood glucose. And when your blood sugar gets too high, your body copes in the same way, the three Ps, right? I have too much blood sugar, too much sugar in my blood. So let's say I, my blood sugar is 200. My kidneys are gonna cope by peeing off all that excess glucose in my urine. So I have, I'm peeing a lot more. So remember polyuria. Well, then my body's thinking, oh shoot, I'm losing fluid. I need to drink more because I'm losing fluid. So your polydipsia. And then my body is still starving for energy. Even though I ate, my sugar wasn't transported enough to where I want it. So I'm going to eat more. So polyphagia to try to get more sugar in my body because I have sugar, but it's in the wrong place. It's in my bloodstream, not my cell. But the big difference is, big difference, traditionally with type 2 diabetics, there's enough insulin that the liver does not start to break down fat. So therefore, ketones are not traditionally present, okay? So same pathway. I want you to think, yes, they're very similar. Increased blood glucose, three Ps, but the big difference with type one diabetics, if we have no external insulin, let's say they came into the emergency department undiagnosed, right? We haven't been giving them insulin, then they will have ketone production, acids building up in their body, affecting their pH and all these other things we're about to talk about versus type two, they have enough insulin on their body traditionally, right? It's insulin resistance but there's still some insulin in their body that they do not have ketone production. That's the big difference between DKA and HHS. So let me show you your chart that you're gonna write down. So when you're looking at these case studies, right? When you look at them, there are some differences off gate. DKA is traditionally a sudden onset versus HHS is a gradual onset. Remember, because with type two diabetics over here, that they have insulin in their body. Traditionally, it takes a while for that insulin resistance to continue to build. Now, this DKA, a lot of times we diagnose it because it's undiagnosed. We don't know they have it. They come into the emergency department and then we realize they're a type one diabetic. But any stressor can trigger a diabetic client to need more insulin right? So literally stress itself. What about an infection, right? Your body needs more energy to fight. So it needs more sugar being transported into the cells and therefore needs more insulin. So any stressor can trigger DKA versus HHS. And like I said, with the pathway, right? The patho, you, they have increased blood sugar in both and they have three P's in both. And if something is going to kill them, I need y'all to think about Maslow's. If something is going to kill them, you need to be thinking about circulation. The kidneys are coping to get that excess blood glucose out of their bloodstream, right? To pee off glucose. That's why we can test the glucose for urine. But when we lose too much fluid, we need to be thinking circulation, right? So circulation is your priority according to Maslow's for these disorders. Unless the topic of the question has something about their pulse ox has gone down or their potassium is sky high. But the, the pathophysiology of these disorders, we need to be thinking about circulation. They have lost too much volume, okay? So circulation on both sides and how that can present. Anytime we've lost volume, our blood pressure goes down. Our heart starts pumping faster and faster and faster. So we have tachycardia because we wanna circulate whatever volume is left in our, in our body, right? We need to get the oxygen perfused to the rest of our cells and tissues. And then we have dry mucous membranes. And let's think about what happens to our kidneys. When we are in trouble circulation rise, the oxygen is going to perfuse to the vital organs, right? Heart, lung, and brains. I'm not thinking about perfusing my kidneys right now. I can't live 
without oxygen to my brain, heart, or lungs, right? But kidneys, they, they can last a little bit longer, so we might start to see increased BUN, increased creatinine, and your priority, if it's a circulatory problem, you gotta replace volume. We are gonna give fluids. Traditionally, it's gonna be normal saline. I can say that depending on how their electrolytes look, it can be normal saline with something in it. But I, at this level, I want y'all to know, give fluids. We are giving IV insulin, and the IV insulin available is regular insulin. And do you see how they are the same at this point? Now, let's differentiate because that case study could have your patient uh, is, you know, your patient's blood sugar is 220. They have low blood pressure, high heart rate, dry mucous membranes, elevated BU and creatinine. At this point, we really can't tell the difference between the two. Uh, but when we start talking about ketone development and acid base imbalances, that's when we start to notice the differences. So remember, with DKA, when you have no insulin in your body or very little, you have serum and urine ketones produced. Because remember, when we have little to no insulin in our body, what does the liver break down? The liver breaks down fat because we need energy. We need energy to survive. So the liver breaks down fat, which then produces ketones. So in DKA, if we were to test their blood and their urine, we would see ketones. Now remember, ketones create an acidic state. So normal pH is 7.35 to 7.45, but we know when it's less than 7.35, we are in an acidic state, okay? And what's the other thing to remember about acid-base balance? When your pH gets low, your potassium gets high. So we have a low pH, less than 7.35, and we have a high, higher potassium level, hyperkalemia. And anytime you think about imbalances with potassium, we need to be thinking the heart. So we need to be monitoring the EKG. We need to be looking for dysrhythmias, okay? And something else. Kuzma's respiration. So let's think about this. When we are in an acidic state, I have too much acid. I'm holding on to too much acid. Your body is going to cope and try to get acid off. So Kuzma's is actually a coping mechanism, okay? Because I want you to think about CO2. CO2 is an acid. So I'm in an acidic state. My pH is less than 7.35. I need to get rid of acid. I'm going to start to blow off my CO2, carbon dioxide, which is an acid, right? It's a coping mechanism. Kuzma's is a coping mechanism. And traditionally in DKA, that they have that fruity acetone breath because of ketone development. Now remember, HHS, because our type two diabetics have insulin in their body, the liver does not break down fat. They have enough insulin to transport some glucose into the cells for energy, so we don't have to break down our fat. Ketones are not developed. So when we're thinking about HHS, right, we're not going to see serum in urine ketones. We're not going to see our pH go acidic. Uh, we're going to see a normal pH level. We're not going to see our potassium go high because of that acidic state. All right? So... Always think about your differences. DKA, literally it's called ketoacidosis, right? You're gonna think of an acidic state, changes to potassium, um, positive tests for serum in urine ketones. Over here with HHS, we're not gonna think of an acid-base imbalance, okay? That's the big key differences. And therefore, you because we don't have ketone, we don't have that acetone breath, that fruity breath, we don't have Kuzma's, which is a coping mechanism to try to blow off carbon dioxide, which is an acid. We don't have any of that. So that's a big hallmark right here of how you can kind of differentiate the two. Now, treatment is very similar for both. Like I said, priority is circulation. You need to administer fluids. We need to um, provide IV insulin. And especially with any acid-base imbalance and changes in potassium, you need to be monitoring their heart. Now, I always want y'all to think, anytime we provide treatment, we can also have a complication for treatment. So post-treatment, you need to ensure circulatory stability. That's Maslow's. I want y'all to think, unless it shows you an airway or breathing problem with DKA or HHS, your, your priority is circulation. We know they're peeing off too much fluid, right? Three Ps, polyuria, they're losing too much volume. We know that. So think circulation. 
unless the question shows you airway or breathing. So ensure circulatory stability. You need to ensure the blood pressure has gone up, the heart rate has gone down. BUN and creatinine levels are getting back to normal because we've replaced volume so our kidneys are being perfused. Now, I want you to monitor for hypoglycemia. Anytime we give IV insulin, regular insulin, we can drop the blood sugar too low too quickly. So remember, anytime you give something, you gotta think about the side effect that, that can occur. So sometimes it's during our treatment, we might add dextrose into our fluid when we're giving IV insulin to try to prevent hypoglycemia from occurring and also monitor for hypokalemia. So remember, when we give IV insulin, going back to pharmacology, insulin, IV insulin pushes glucose into the cell, but it also pushes potassium into the cell. So we can see a side effect of hypoglycemia with IV insulin administration. So make sure you're monitoring for hypokalemia. We might have to add potassium to our fluids if needed, but those are things we need to look for post-treatment. So I hope this helped. It was a quick video on differentiating DKA versus HHS, but I want you to focus on right here. When you have a difference in a pH and potassium, right, and coping mechanisms like cool smalls and fruity breath, you need to be thinking DKA. If you have high blood sugar, three Ps, but no ketone production, no changes in pH, no changes in potassium, you should be thinking HHS. That's kind of a good tidbit of differentiating those two um, disorders. So as always, if this helped you, I hope you help somebody else. Take care.